hopefully that'll work for people that can't attend. So we're going to go through, um, I think, mainly crypto today, but generally the principles of what I'm going through. And pl please feel free to jump in uh, if you've got some other ideas, because, you know, this is you know, I'm not a professional. Um, and what we'll focus on is how to value crypto. And the fundamental philosophy can be applied to stocks as well. They're a little bit different, obviously, because they don't have the same tokenomics, but you can still use some of the fundamental principles. Um, how you do simple TA. I know a lot of us have been through this anyway, and I'm sure a lot of us are pretty good at this already. But there's a few of us uh, that don't know how to do TA, how to use TradingView. So I thought I'd just go through the basics again, just one last time. Um, and also how we understand uh, market cycles. I think that's a that's a little bit tougher to uh, try to get a grip with and no one really understand how to do that. But at least we know when there's a bear market and when there's a bull market and when to buy and when to sell, or at least take profits. Does that sound OK? Yep. If there's any technical problems, Ellie, you're being the most vocal. So just let me know. All right. Sure. Cool. So, <laughs> cool. All right. Well, nice to. Um, meet everyone which i'm almost obviously not meeting everyone but nice for everyone to turn up at least uh i thought it might just be myself and uh i don't know possibly ellie and jatin again but <laughs> it's good to see everyone has attended so let's start with how to value a coin now does anyone want to uh shout out a coin that we can have a look at a, a token a crypto that you're interested in that you've been looking at lately that uh, maybe that's a little bit risky that we should quickly use as an example ftm FTM, yeah, okay, cool. So I don't know. Or glamour. Glamour. Did someone say glamour? Yeah, I said that. It's either one of those risky ones. When you say glamour, do you mean moonbeam? That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do uh, phantom first. So phantom. So the things you should be looking at is phantom is all obviously an established uh, layer layer two or layer one. Um, what you you want to be first looking at is the market cap. Right. And the market cap is basically the circulating supply times the price and you'll get the market cap. But you but you also want to be looking is the fully diluted valuation. So you want to be looking at how much max supply there is that could be dumped onto the market. Now, if you look at this three million, uh, three, uh, three billion, sorry, nearly four billion and five billion. So for a protocol, that's not bad especially with the trading volume is all you'd be looking at. That's a billion. So that's a very popular coin. There's a lot of liquidity in Phantom. Now, as far as the total locked value, I don't think that's right, actually, because I think Phantom has a lot more than that. If you actually go to DeFi Llama, and this is how much has been staked on Phantom and its protocols. So if you go to FTM in uh, DeFi Llama, and this will give you all the information that you need for DeFi protocols. Um, this might be complicated for some people that don't really understand what crypto is, but so this will give you uh, all the different protocols and how much, so if you go to chains here, and how much is invested in each. And if you can see here, Phantom is number six and number five is Solana. So in relation to the market caps, so if you go to Sol, Sol's market cap is about, look, I'm not even going to go there. It's about 30 billion. I know that offhand. So in relation to it, Phantom is a good deal. It's also had a nice dump, right? So it went from, I think, maybe close to $3. Now it went all the way down to about a dollar. And now it's making its way up. I'm not saying that it's going to make its way up back to $3 because this is a fundamental uh, event here. This was because, um, what's his name? Anton. Anton left the project. So at a massive, massive dump. I think if you want to average down, Phantom is a good project. But also try to consider it's also had a 76,000% increase in the last uh, two years. So it's up to you. I personally uh, don't have Phantom. I have one of its protocols called T-Shares here. Um, only because uh, Phantoms, I missed Phantom, so there's no point in me getting into Phantom. So T -share, Tomb Shares is a protocol on Phantom. As you can see, the market is 187 uh, million. 
its total supply or max supply is 70 billion and its fully diluted valuation is 335 and has also had a dump of about 80 percent uh, in the last couple of months so i'm happy to get tomb shares uh, as you know i think i got into this about 2300 and it also gives you about at the moment about a thousand uh api interest as well now i'm getting off the subject here so let's go back to how we value a coin so firstly you look at the market cap fully diluted market cap are you happy to get into a project that's worth five billion do you think this project is worth five billion if you think that's a yes then get into it uh, the fully diluted valuation is its market cap in relation to what is invested inside the protocol this is wrong so don't take notice of this uh, what's inside the actual protocol is uh, it's here it's 6.68 billion so that means its tvl ratio is 0 0.57 when you get to one that tells you it's worth as much as its market cap here when it's like this it's telling you it's undervalued sorry people are still trying to get into the uh there cool so look at the circulating supply look at what's invested inside the uh protocol and make a decision that if it's worth it or not phantom's actually quite a popular coin so it's not really a good example let's go to uh, moonbeam which is a glmr so this is an interesting one so i obviously used my dot to get loads of uh, moonbeam so i got about uh, i think about maybe six thousand seven thousand uh uh, uh dollars worth of moonbeam and i sold them straight away now the reason why i sold them is for coins like moonbeam so moonbeam went all the way up to i think uh, i think 16 17 dollars i sold it about here so i did sell it near the as well not the top here but i sold it near about 15 dollars uh, 14 dollars and i actually bought back just recently around two dollars um so that means instead of having i think i had about 600 tokens i ended up having about 2500 the reason i sold it is because the emission rate you see coins like moonbeam they release tokens onto the market very slowly so they're slowly diluting the market so if you're buying moonbeam as soon as it gets released that means people are dumping all the way down here because they're putting more and more tokens onto the market that dilutes the market cap and also at the time if you look at the market at a moonbeam now it's it's fine i mean this is the circulating supply um, market cap but if you times that by five because this is the total supply that's the actual valuation of moonbeam which is about three billion so you have to think to yourself is this protocol currently with this adoption is it worth three billion and is it worth three billion um you know with obviously a lot of tokens still being dumped into uh the market for the next maybe six to nine months and the the way you can check that is if you just put in emission rate uh moonbeam there should be someone that has Okay, now I'm not going to go into it, but you should be able to find out exactly when the tokens are being unlocked and being dumped onto the market. So I'm not saying it's not a good it's not good value now because I think it is good value now. But was it good value when you got the tokens at fifteen dollars? So personally, well, it was at nineteen dollars fifty. That that was tight. So it's taken an eighty four percent dump. The whole market's taken a dump. But for a big pro protocol like this, now might be a good place to get in because a lot of people were obviously buying at $19 and now you get it at for $2. It might still go down to $1, who knows? But uh, it's at least a, a better, at least you can average down from $3 rather than averaging down from $19 or $15. So, so does anyone, is there any other tokens that you want to look at quickly? So market cap, circulating supply, total supply you need to look at these because you'll get a lot of people that say buy this token buy this token and the problem is the market caps are far too high so if you look at something like let's say bitcoin the reason i don't buy bitcoin anymore is it's simple like bitcoin's great right but the problem is 
Bitcoin's market cap is near 1 trillion. So that means for Bitcoin to go to 100,000, it needs another 1 trillion to go into the market, right? But if you're looking at something like, I don't know, um, Zilliqa, let's look at Zilliqa, that's, that's jumped a lot lately. Zilliqa, you need, so for that to double, you need another 2.5 billion. Now that is far more achievable than getting 1 trillion. Does that make sense? Cool. Does anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, just very quickly. Why are we using a multiplier, multiplier of five earlier? Multiplier of five. When was I using a multiplier of five? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll show you. Uh, this is because for Moonbeam. Yeah. That's... Um, my maths isn't great. It's because its total supply is one billion. And remember, you also have to consider that it's max supply, a lot of these coins, they inflate, right? They may inc increase over 5%, 10%, 12%, but you need to understand what the inflation rate is. Currently, the total supply is 1 billion and uh, circulating supply is 200 million. So what I did was I timed that by 5, right? That would get me to uh, 1 billion. Okay, yeah, yeah. And that's why I said that. Okay. For, so that's what yeah. you're going to be looking at. And you also yeah, want to... you want. Okay. Yeah, and you also want to be looking at the the vol trading volume as well. So, for instance, let's look at is John here? Um, so MCC, right? This is the one that we always talk about in our risky group. Yeah, MCC. So MCC is it's got a lot of supply, right? I mean, it doesn't really give you the market cap at all. But the 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 worrying thing about this is the trading volume. You got seventy five thousand. Uh, thousand, uh, but you got seventy five thousand dollars in trading volume, right? Even though the uh, the fully diluted market cap is very low, right? So that means that if, if you just get thirty mi uh, seven, well, not to hundred million into this market, it times five, but you need a lot because you've only got seventy five thousand dollars in trading volume. That means there really currently there isn't much interest in this coin. I hope John doesn't kill me for this. But look, I mean, if you look at this is 24 hours, but if you look at the uh, price section over time, I and mean, this doesn't tell you much, but it's down nine, 94%, you know, which is fine, which, you know, which is, you would think that would be a good buy right now if it's down 95%. But if you look at the trading volume, it's just too low. So for someone like me, I, I wouldn't really be looking to touch this uh, currently. Um, but I don't know the fundamentals of it. So you, if John knows the fundamentals of it and he feels that, you know, it does have a future, then he knows more than me. But personally, I can't touch something that doesn't have even $1 million worth of trading volume. It's just too low. Is there any other coins you want some, You want me to look at? Is there any super risky ones? Pete, what about, is Pete here? Pete, what about your one, your porn coin? Is it Simp? Yeah, they're they're okay, they're, okay. <laughs> you know more than me, but okay, let's look at Simp. Right, so Pete's no, coin. No, 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 it's basically they're going to take it out of circulation and kind of rebrand it and relaunch it. Okay, so this this at. trading volume isn't. It, it, there's a reason why this trading volume is, is twenty two dollars. Yeah, because they told everyone to stop trading it, and then okay. they're going <laughs> to convert it to another coin at the end of the month. Okay, so, okay, month. okay. So, okay, so um. So, for instance, something like so, if you go over to the home page, what Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko will give you, it'll give you the top hundred coins, right, in regards to its market cap. But what you want to be looking at is not just the market cap; you want to be looking at its trading volume, and you want to be looking at its tokenomics. And you don't just want to be looking at just its tokenomics in relation to what this tells you so you, for instance solana you've got 500 million tokens you also want to be looking at how many solana is actually inflated so how what's the inflation rate i think solana is about 10 percent, but don't quote me on that but then you've got to understand that 10 percent of tokens are going to be mined every single or state you know given through staking every single year and going to be dumped on the market as well so that will affect the market cap so you gotta understand are you happy to get into solana at 40 billion me i am yeah i like solana i think i still think this is cheap but i don't think solana is going to go to 
$2,000 very quickly. It could do, but I don't think it's going to do it very quickly. Could it go to $2,000 before a Bitcoin goes to 200000 If Bitcoin goes 200000 yeah, Solana could definitely go to $2,000 uh, $2, because the Bitcoin money comes into the alts. So when, when the Bitcoin moves up, I do all my TO on Bitcoin, I don't buy Bitcoin. I buy the altcoins. I buy the cheapest altcoins that I think have been hit the most and that have the best fundamentals and that I think have a current narrative. For instance, like Rune. The reason why I was going about Rune quite a lot is because if you look at DeFi Llama, Rune... Uh, so I keep my eye on this. Where is it? Uh, so Rune... Rune is still overvalued in my opinion, but I think it could it could blast like Luna. It's one of those coins that could just blast. The reason is you can see it's TVL broke its all time high. So when these th when when this things like this happen, I know that there's a narrative shift. So I get into some stuff, something like Rune, and as you can see, Rune. So if you go to Trading View, let me just go into some technicals. So if you put in Rune, and then you put in USDT, and then you can have a look at what how rune has been doing and as you can see uh yeah see it's broken trend so this is rune's historic trend i mean i have this is something that i drew over time so it's not something i've been adding it's just it's just always been there i draw i draw lines here and there in the short term but generally these trends keep so as you can see it rose very quickly all the way from i think 0 0.32 to is it 20 Twenty dollars went to around about five dollars, four dollars. Hit resistance at thirteen, came back to four dollars again, and now what it's done is it's broken this trend. And so, a lot of the times when it breaks this trends, you get blue sky movements. So you breaks this trend, come back and retests it. Let's see what it's doing. So let's just zoom in. It retests that ten trend. It's trying to do that, and then it takes off. But we'll see if that happens. And sometimes, you know, it breaks it and it comes back down. But the high probability is that a lot of these times, if Bitcoin is going up, then get yourself into good alts. Because when Bitcoin times two, then these good alts are going to times 10. Right? No, I'm not saying this one specifically. But, you know, the, the thing is, if you didn't get, get into Bitcoin at $1,000 or $20,000 or, I don't know, $3,000, you probably missed the boat on Bitcoin. So you may as well pick a good blue chip uh altcoin and when i say blue chip i mean something in the top 30 so anything here that's not a stable coin cool does anyone have any more questions can we have a look at valuing some, some kind of kind of more risky super small caps sure oh sure uh so let me look at okay so let me look at the one i called earlier called um shiba predator now this one and i said to you everyone this is a sh super risky shitcoin right it is um uh, it has a market cap of i think uh, wait, look, look at this to total supply what is that I don't, I don't even know what that number is it's a lot right it's market cap fully diluted is about 200 million but what i liked about this one it's twitter so if you go oh, oh, oh. let me go let me go back a little bit if, if you look at its twitter page in relation to its market cap and where it you know where it is it's actually got quite a lot of followers so i'm not going to go into it but it's got about forty thousand followers now uh it starts sorry yeah forty thousand now it started with 10 and there was a incremental increase and look at its trading volume nine nearly 10 million for a coin that's only got 200 million fully diluted so it's 200 million for this right it's only got and it's, it's got 10 million uh trading volume and the other thing that i looked at is if you actually go to coin market cap one thing to also consider is holders so if you go to qam so this is coin market cap it's like coin gecko it's pretty much the same thing but it does sometimes give you different stats so if you go to holders and you can check this on the Ethereum blockchain as well, but it's easier just to check it here. Uh, again, I don't recommend anybody get into coins like this. It's just that I have a little bit more.
natural instinct for the market and how these things work so i can get i can put a little bit of my pro uh, portfolio into this so so look at the holders you see it's gone from 382 which is a, you know pretty much around about where i got in to now nearly 6000 holders so there's interest in this coin right again it could do nothing i mean it truly has no uh, uh, foundations has no fundamentals it really is a coin to uh, you know it's a meme coin just to trade for a while and then sell everything and move on to something that actually makes sense so its market cap is uh, 98 million if this gets to a billion I'll, I'll do a 10x and I'll take every. I'll literally take pretty much 75% out and put it into something like Solana or Ethereum and just hold it. And that's what I do. I'll take 75% out all these risky coins that are below the top 100 or 200 and I put them in the uh, the big coins, the Ethereum. And that's how you build up your stack of Bitcoins and your Ethereum by taking your shit. Coins. Do not hold on to these shit coins for a long time. Unless they're fundamentals, do not hold on to them. Just get rid of them as soon as they hit a point that you like so for me uh, it's 1 billion i've already sold my initial uh, half of this so i've already sold um uh, what i put into it so it's all free money for me but for these shit coins remember sell out as soon as you can yeah but again the big reason is low market cap high volume lot holders right so there's three metrics tick 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 and also really good social engagement and there's a rising trend on Twitter. All right. Again, that could still lead to nothing. It's still risky. But I'm thinking if it goes somewhere, then it could really, really explode. Cool. Uh, obviously, a lot of gains have still be, be, be already been made on this. Cool. So if, if you guys don't have any more questions on that, I'm going to move on to the technicals. Unless some people have any specific questions on how to value a coin. Has someone mentioned rain? Rain. Chat? Yeah, Rainmaker. Yeah, sorry, that was me again. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just doing free consulting. <laughs> Rainmaker, yeah, yeah. This this Rainmaker Games is it? This one. Rainmaker Games, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been hearing about this, so this is I think this has good fundamentals. Um, so let me so trading volume, mm, okay. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's the same one. Let me just go on to. So there's not much data on CoinGecko, so I'll move on to Coin Market Cap. So if you don't have great data in uh, one of the websites, go on to the other one. So let's click on here. So let's check a few things. So let's check the market cap. Low, right? So market is uh, cap is 10 million. So for this to double, you just need another 10 million. That's a tick. Uh, a fully diluted market cap is bloody huge, and the reason for that is because the max supply is a billion, right? But there's only uh, a ver there's only a few coins. Well, there's only a really a small portion of that on the market. So that means that it's actually really nearly half a billion in um, market cap. So it's very deceptive, and its volume isn't that great. So this this isn't impressing me that much so far. So uh, let me have a look at. The holders, so uh, holders. Let's look at it over three months. Yeah, you see decrease in holders, so people are selling this. Yeah, so that's not great. So market cap looks good, volume does not look good. Fully di diluted market cap is horrendous. So tokenomics is really really bad. So what you need to look at is you need to look at the emission rate. You need to understand when these tokens are going to be dumped onto the market and the holders again red flag so yeah i don't like this one just from the the, the one minute quick look right i don't like it this is it's, even though it's, it looks like if you just look at this and you didn't have the fully diluted market cap it, it doesn't look too bad for the volume but if you take the fully diluted market cap into consideration which you always should it's massively overvalued for what it is yeah, you could also then go on to Twitter and figure out how many Twitter follower it ha follows it has, uh, which is I'm not going to do that right now, but you can do that. Cool. So that's it. So I'm sure everyone should be able to value a coin now. 
Thanks. Yeah? Is it is, yeah, is, is, is there anything else that you, you guys want me to look at? So should I look at one more higher ranked coin? Or oh, unless you guys are happy, I'm happy to move on to the technicals. Uh, what what platforms are you using to purchase these alts? Okay, cool. That's a that's a good question. So, guys, so for instance, Rainmaker. Let's look at this. So, let's say uh, someone said uh, on the group, guys, I like Rainmaker. This is why I like it. Always tell them why you like it. It can be risky, uh, but I like it. Where what you want to do is you want to go into Coin Gecko. Make sure you've got the right right. Uh, token so rainmaker games and then you go into markets and what you want to do is you want to look for i suppose the highest volume so uniswap is the i suppose best one i mean if you don't if you don't have ethereum which is going, it's going to cost you a lot of money obviously to do the transaction there so maybe go for pancake swap so there's a bsc token and there's an ethereum token so maybe go for pancake swap and what you do there is you would um Put you take your uh, BNB or BUSD or, or whatever, and you would put them onto Pancake Swap, and then use use Pancake Swap to buy rain, if you wanted rain. But the uh, the, the volumes aren't great, to be fair. Uh, you can use Hubi as well if you want, um, but yeah, it doesn't. I mean, it might have some fundamentally good things with the coin that I don't know about, but just looking at it from just the technicals the fundamentals i'm seeing here it doesn't look like there's much interest in it but that could obviously change they might bring out some great game or have a partnership with ubisoft in the next few days what do i know but that's something that you need to dig deeper into the coin itself that only you would know about yeah cool so shall we move on to the technicals Yeah. Okay. Cool. So technicals. Does and not some anyone in the group not have experience with trading view? I'm just gonna quickly look for some answers here. So this um, is gone. I've kind of got a bit of experience, but where I seem to, because I kind of switched off from all the noise for the past six seven months, mm -hmm. I've kind of um, lost some of the basics I knew about a year ago. So things like you know. RSI and all that sort of stuff. But more importantly, the thing that is really bothering me is how to effectively draw draw a Fibonacci re retracement. I, I can, for example, I still know I know how to do all the uh, resistance and something lines. Trend lines are a bit of an issue, but I think maybe that that's for me is a new perspective. I think if we take a quick straw poll on what are the areas other people are like, oh yeah, I kind of know that, but I don't really know that. We might have a bit of an overlap, so you can just focus on specific things that maybe most of us don't know. I think it looks like, from reading the messages, um, there's limited experience. So what I'll probably, what I'm going to do, and Jatin, this might be like teaching a granny to suck eggs for you because you you probably already know this. I don't mind sucking your eggs. Man. You don't mind sucking my eggs. Okay, fine. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly go through the fundamentals of trading view and just the main uh, technicals. And then maybe me and you can have a personal one just about fibs at some point, yeah? Or we can do the next session. Is that okay? Because because fibs are quite the fibs can get quite complicated, especially for some people that don't even know what trading view is. Go with the basics. Okay, cool. So just quickly, I just want to quickly just uh, go into the same principles around how you value crypto to stocks. So if you look at something like Apple, and there's a reason why I don't invest in Apple, is the same reason I don't invest in uh, Bitcoin. So if you look at Apple's historic chart, so hang on a minute, where are we? So look at Apple. Apple's nearly 3 billion market cap, right? So for Apple to double, Right, just double, not 10x, 4x, just double, you need 3 billion. Look at its all-time chart. That's Apple's all-time chart. So what does it need to look like, right, for it to get to 400? Right, I'm not saying Apple is not a great, great, fun, fundamentally it's not great. Obviously, fundamentally, it's amazing, it's cash rich, and, you know, you sh it's, it's a safe bet, I would say, even to average down. Even if it goes down to $1, you know, it's good to have Apple. But there's a reason why I don't invest in these things, and I I invest in things like PLTR, 
Upwork, um, you know, eBay, Twitter. Like if you look at PLTR in relation to its uh, market cap, PLTR, obviously not the same company, doesn't bring us the same revenue. So I'm not comparing to that. But and and it's still multiple market cap is still much, much, you know, it's probably 11 times, 20 times, 30 times multiples on its revenue anyway. But its market cap obviously has a lot more to grow. Right. And also PLTR, if you if you go online, if you if you talk to a lot of younger people, it's it had the same kind of sentiment as Tesla did back maybe three years ago. So that's the one of the reasons why even in stocks, I try to obviously I don't go too risky. I don't go below one billion, but I try to stay with big companies that haven't quite taken off. I mean, look at Twitter. And there's a reason why I love Twitter so much. And I know not everybody loves Twitter. The reason why I love Twitter so much is because Twitter is next to Facebook. And it, and it does. It's, I think it's better than Facebook because it does a different thing to Facebook. But it's only 31 billion. That's less than Solana. Right. I know stocks are a little bit different because you, you can inflate them whenever you want. You know, you can do placements and stuff like that. But it's 31 billion for possibly the best social site in the world. I don't know. Yeah. And Facebook's over, you know, things like 300 billion, uh, 300 billion or something like that. 31 billion. It's pretty good. So that's the Sonana. That's that was less than Dogecoin at one point. Dogecoin. OK, cool. I'm not going to go into it because I'm going to get myself wound up. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you can use the same principles when it comes to, comes to stock investing as you can for crypto. So trading view so trading view is a site that allow or a tool or a site that allows you to do technical analysis on cryptos stocks markets everything so i'm just going to quickly show you bitcoin and the the technicals and the indicators that i use so if you want to do analysis on a stock or a crypto or a market what you do is you just put in the uh, symbol inside here and when it comes to crypto you want to put in the symbol uh, as well as what you're trading with so for instance btc usdt or btc usd whatever it could you can also do like ethereum versus bitcoin and that will show you uh, if bitcoin's going to go up against uh, ethereum and stuff like that but let's not get into that right now let's go for the simple bitcoin ta right so technical analysis on uh, on on um bitcoin so the first and my favorite indicator, and I've and Jack, I know Jack, and you've been with me for a while, so you know I'm going to keep going about this. Is the RSI? You can probably just trade on the RSI and not worry about anything else. And this is for crypto, not for stocks, because stocks do not hold TA nowhere near like uh, crypto does. And I just think there's just a lot more bot trading in crypto. But uh, if you look at uh, Bitcoin's RSI. So let's look at its RSI. So RSI, what you want to do is you want to put any indicators in there. You'd go into uh, here, indicators. You put an RSI, you select it, and then it would appear at the bottom of your screen. So this is the RSI. So this is Bitcoin's historic chart, right? And this is the weekly chart. What that means is that for every single candle you have here, it represents one week. So if the candle is red, that means the price started off at the top and ended up at the bottom. If it's green, that means it started off at the bottom and ended at the top. OK, that's that's all it is. And what the RSI tells you is a relative strength index. It tells you the sentiment in the market. So if you just say instead of if you just invested every time Bitcoin hit are the lower levels of, let's say, 27 right here 27 here right so you would instead of investing at the top you'd actually always be investing near the bottom okay you'd have to average in because in for instance like if it's a bear market the rsi could go low bounce back up and then keep going low again and again and again so it could keep going low so for instance the rsi here was at 27 and the price was at 308 dollars bitcoin wow and then it did rebound back to uh, 450, but then crashed back down to 144, and the RSI still maintained 27. Now, when you say when you see something like this, when the RSI is uh, making higher lows, but the price is going down, that's called a bullish divergence. 
that mean at, at some point the price is going to reverse and this is a really really strong indicator because for me it usually works there's very few times I, i've seen that that the bullish indicators and the bearish indicators don't really work it's still a probability but you know they're very good at judging but let's just say you uh, waited for the rsi to bottom and you invested at these levels you'll always be buying these coins on the cheap let's go back further up here because th that's just ridiculous that's gone too far back so let's say you invested in Bitcoin here when the RSI hit 27, right? Bitcoin was at $4,000, $3,000, right? And then you sold as soon as the RSI got to, let's say, round about, you know, it did get to about 92 here. But let's say you sold about when it got to about 80. You'd sell at about, you know, $45,000. And again, you'd buy it and then you'd sell it here and then you'd buy it back, let's say, when it hit. And the reason why I draw this line because usually this line historically has always kept. The only time it's not kept is when we entered a bear market, when it went below it. It's the only time. So here, even now, as you can see, it hit it and it's rebounded. So if you just use the RSI, whenever it gets above 80, just take profits. That's all you need to do. Just take profits and wait for the RSI to reset. That's all you need to do. All right. So sell it when it gets to about 80. I'm not saying sell everything. But ladder out. So take a couple thousand out. Whatever, whatever your, you know, whatever your percentage is. It might be fifty. It could be a thousand. It could be ten thousand. But just start taking some profit out. Leave it in stable coins. And then when the RSI resets back to this line here, which is usually its historic RSI line, buy back, buy back a little, yeah. And then when it then you know hits its uh, mean again, sell it a little bit and then buy back. That's all you need to do. If you follow this simple advice i mean you can't really go wrong so whenever you get to these levels you should sell especially when you get bullish divergence bearish divergences like this so the bearish divergences is, is when the price is going up but the rsi is making lower highs so here when bitcoin went to like 50k then 60k but the rsi is actually getting lower here see Now, I'll get off the RSI, but I use sometimes I just use RSI and that's it. That's it. And I just trade just off RSI. The next indicator is uh, the MACD. Again, super powerful indicator. And if you want to add the MACD, go into here, type MACD, right? And then add it. Now, if you look at the MACD, what you want to do is you want to see, and just like the moving average, and I'll explain the moving average in a minute, you want to see the 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 blue line sorry the red line <laughs> hang on a minute hang on a minute you want to see the blue line go underneath the red line okay so it's like the the higher time frame going below the shorter time frame and what that points to is a bearish moment now let's just say you sold every time this happened so you bought every time the blue line went over the red line and then you sold every time the uh, blue line went below the red line okay so let's say you, you bought here and that would be around what what is it eleven thousand. so that's what that's when we had the golden when we had the cross here sorry in the macd so you'd buy here so it went from ten thousand to sixty thousand and then we had a cross around fifty five thousand and let's just you sold there and just said right you're not going to enter the market again until we've seen the uh the MACD at least of let's say like you just want you wait for a 50% decrease right and then you wait for a 50% decrease and then you bought back either you can buy it back here or you can buy it back after the cross so look you buy back at the cross here 45,000 and then I think it went to 61,000 right again yeah the cross again see we told us it was the market was going down none about this Russia stuff the, the MACD told us way before Putin was invading countries that we we're going to go down. And the same with the Nasdaq. This happened way before Putin was saying anything about wars, right? And look what happened. It crashed from 60,000 down to 32,000. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions around the RSI and the MACD? They're really, really powerful indicators. But you need to have discipline when you use this because a lot of people, even when it crosses, they get a bit delusioned because they think the price is going up. Why would I sell it here? 
The thing is, it, it's telling you what's going to happen. You need to be disciplined, at least take some profits out, put it away and say, listen, I'll buy back in when the max is crossing. Now, if you look at Bitcoin quickly, I'll tell you what the, the bullish thing that's happening here is. Look what's happening now. You see, there looks like there's a cross, bullish cross. So if there's a bullish cross, then we could go to 100K. So if you just look at this, I mean, we need to get over this and confirm, but we could easily get to... Uh, 116k depending on where we hit this so i could do this and up or it could go here now if we break this and go up there is no limit to where bitcoin could go it truly could go to a million if it breaks this and it confirms this it could go parabolic to a million i know that sounds silly because if it goes to a million the altcoins are going to just make i mean everybody's going to be rich basically so i don't honestly think that will happen anytime soon because it's not that easy to make money but if you look at the historic chart of bitcoin look at it it's held this trend so if you the trend lines i'll talk about in a second it's held this trend look boom 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 and even when people were getting scared uh when we had this dump it held it There's, you know we started getting green candles as soon as we hit these lower levels is there any questions Yeah, sorry, dude. I uh, I missed the stuff you were saying on the MACD. If you don't mind, just going through that again. So, okay. Well, you you know you know about the MACD. Um... Oh, well, I feel a bit like. Um... Okay. All right. Let me quickly go over it. So, MACD simple principles. When the blue line goes below the red line, sell it. That's it. Sell it. When and and it can be for any time frame. So it can be for daily, for four hour. If you're doing you know, swing trades. But if you want to use a macro level, and you should be using a macro level, what, if you're looking at the weekly, right, and you should be looking at the weekly, when the weekly, because a monthly can be deceptive. So I think weekly is a sweet spot. So that when the weekly time frames, when the, blue li when the blue line goes over the red line, sell it. Sell a portion of your profits, okay? Especially if you bought it at the positive cross, n sell it at the negative cross. So when I mean the negative cross, when the blue line crosses the red line here yeah here sell it yeah look how much money you'd save if you sell it it's like a 50 percent drop each time right now and then when the blue line goes over the red line buy it when it crosses again sell it now if you do this with just a small percentage of your profits it doesn't matter because even if, if it's a fake out then it doesn't matter because you're taking profits out but if you're buying at these levels then you know, you and, but the thing is, the problem with what the, the MACD is, and I said before, it's all about emotion. People just don't want to sell here. And we're, and we're, for instance, now what's happening is we're getting a positive MAC cross. People still aren't sure if it's a bull market because this could still fake out. So we could still pretend to go over and then fake back down if we get a crash. So if the Nasdaq crashes, we might still get a crash. Now, if you look at what's happening here on the weekly, on the monthly, the the trend line's holding. But if you look on the weekly, Bitcoin still needs to get over this and at the moment can you see it's hit this line and it's starting to reject now i'm not saying it will reject but it looks like on the week so far it's starting to reject if we get above this and we confirm honestly altcoins could make such gains it's silly not to be in them okay not i'm um, even even bitcoin would make good gains but you know if bitcoin goes to 100k great you got times two brilliant you know you probably get that in a stock um but Sorry, sorry, uh, chatting. Did I am I overextending that? Do you get what I mean uh, by MACD now? I do. Paul yeah. has a question in the message. Yeah, sell, buy, sell, buy. That's all you yeah, need to do. Uh, uh, there. There's a question from Paul. Messages. He's saying, What do you mean if you call an indicator lagging? Okay, cool. So, a lagging indicator, Paul, is if you look at Bitcoin again, do you remember everybody was calling for the death cross? So what happens is when you got a massive crash in Bitcoin like this, right? Um, the problem is you had such a big monumental drop, but the cross, the MACD cross. So for instance, uh, moving averages, when the higher time frames go over the larger time frames, like, let me think, is that correct? Jetting, correct me if that's correct. When the lo lower time frames go over the higher time frames, that's positive. Yes. So for instance, You've got the 200 MA. This is, now we're going to moving averages, right? And this is just an average of the price movement. So you've got the moving averages. You've got the 200, 100, 21, 9, 50. When you have, let's say, the 100 
and it goes over the 200, that's a positive signal. But when you have the lower indicators, let's see what happened here. So what is this one? So nine, I think. Yeah. So when you have uh, the lower indicators go below the high indicators, that's what's called a death cross. So when you have like, for instance, the 200 go below the 200, that's called it's called a death cross. And what's a lagging indicator is when the death cross comes after such a massive drop, it's already lost its power. So here, the, the cross was around 48,000, right? But the thing is, it was already too late because at 59,000, to um, the cross came at what? Well, sorry, sorry, sorry. The cross came at thirty-five thousand. So the cross came already when Bitcoin had bottomed, right? So that's a lagging indicator. So if it takes such a massive dump, right, that means the death cross doesn't really have much power because you've already dumped too far for it to matter too much anyway. So you may as well start buying. It doesn't mean that it can't keep dumping for a while, but it just means that it loses significance because it's already dumped too far. So if you've already had a 50% dump, then you may as well just go start buying and averaging your price. Does that make sense, Paul? Cool. Um, right, so you've got the MACD, RSI. Uh, forget this, there's a stochast stochastic. I'm not even going to mention this for now. Um, but the the more important um indicate that you need to be looking at is trend lines because yeah you can look at macd you can use moving averages but i like to look at trend lines because trend lines are the things that really give you support and it gives you uh trading signals so let's look at solana quickly all right so i did a trade on solana so i don't usually do trades right i don't do leverage trade and stuff nothing like that but when market sometimes takes a huge dumps i do get involved in some trades so if you look at solana it took a massive dump from $250 all the way down to about 80, right? Um, and you can't predict it will go down this far, right? But what I do is it went below the 200 MA, right? So it crashed below the 200 MA, how many percent? So let's say it did 42% below the 200 MA, right? And also it hit some, and it was making some, um, it was also pulling a bullish divergence. Can you see? The price is going down, but the RSI is going up. And bullish divergence really is the most powerful indicator you can get. Personally, for me, it usually always works. So when I start seeing a bullish divergence, I don't have to wait long. I just need to wait for the first one, right? So for instance, here, you got a price of $80, and then the price went below it to about $77. And then, but the RSI is higher. So RSI is really low here, around 21. But when it hit, another low, a lower low, RSI is higher. For me, I got into a trade, right? Because as soon as I see a bullish divergence, I got into a trade and then I just kept it. And as you can see, what happened is it broke out of this trend and I said trend line, retested it like it always does. There, can you see the retest? It always retests it to get people nervous and then it takes off, all right? Now I did close this trade early because I, I think I closed, I got a bit nervous and cold, closed it about, 104 or 100 or what something like that but i should have really been looking at these other trend line which is here at 133 and at the 200 ma which i think it'll get to 149 dollars because i think it will get to 149 dollars but you also have to understand is the rsi too high here remember i said sell the rsi when it gets too high yeah so it's at 72 now so it's getting quite high so you know it might be worth taking some profits but I'm still thinking that it might hit the 200 MA at some point. And also Solana is quite bullish right now and it's had a massive dump. Um, um, so when did you enter the trade and when, where did you exit? So I entered the trade at, uh, at uh, the first sign of the bullish divergence, right? So here, so, so this one, put a mate. Roughly 85 bucks. Right, round about, uh, I didn't get the bottom, I think got round about 80, 80 bucks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I held it for about 100, 105 or something like that. So in that particular case, did you have like a stop order? No. You don't yeah. I never, I, I, I never bought stop orders. For crypto, oh. it, it, I know what's because their uh, prices usually spike down 
and then spike back up. So what I do is if we do get a dump, I look at indicators, I wait for a rebound and then sell. Yeah, but I don't usually have uh, uh, stop losses for anything. I don't, I don't, I don't have stop. I don't use stop losses full stop. Regardless, anyway, I probably should when um, you know, but I, I just, I just don't. Um, um, would you mind doing a screenshot of this? We're just adding the entry and exit points uh, where you entered and when you exited. Just share that on WhatsApp. And get them I will do, mate. Uh, to be fair, that's not a really good indicator. Let me quickly show you the Nasdaq quickly because it, this this has been following indicators quite well. And I'll tell you some of the things I did here. Yeah. So this, so Nasdaq, I think if you remember, one of the things I said was when the war started, when the invasion happened and everybody's saying, yeah, it's going to go down. I said, listen, it's hit the 100 MA, right? I even tweeted about this. And I said, I think this is the bottom, right? There's actually, I can show you my tweet. I literally said, this is the bottom. And it did exactly that. What it did was it broke down, hit the, uh, the 100 MA, sorry, and it bounced right up. Just you know, for the last few weeks. And this is the start of the invasion. Yeah. And it started bouncing up. Now, what you can see here, you're seeing something dangerous here. All right. Firstly, it looks like that we're rejecting off this trend re resistance. If we reject off this resistance, we could technically keep going down to catastrophic levels. We could. Right. But if you look at the daily. So here, this looks bad. Because you can, if you look at it, it looks like it's wicking from the resistance right it's struggling with it and it's wicking and that's also where the 21 ma is which is also a really really powerful indicator right it looks like it's rejecting off the 21 ma right and it looks like it's also rejecting off that trend line so it's merging a bearish indicators here right but if you look at the daily so you're, you're going to look at this like a story right if you look at the daily you can see it actually broke up and now what it's doing it's retesting right so it looks like it wants to hold this line now let's go back let's look at this nasdaq right let's go back all the way back now this is the nasdaq right for un, uh, from uh 2009 all right when we had the catastrophic bear market in 2009 which was really amazing because listen for two years you had a bear market but if you bought in not even two years like year and a half if you bought in in those one and a half years you'd be rich and in stocks you'd be rich because you've just had a 13 year bull market Right now, what happened here near COVID is actually this trend line has always been has kept itself for the last 13 years. But in COVID, it actually broke up and it broke up and it held this resistance for a couple of years and then it broke down. And these indicators came way before Putin did anything right before he was even crying anything like that. So the charts will tell you the news before the news the news tells you and it, what's going on right so people always say oh this is happening because of this and this and this i just say mate the tar charts will tell you the news right because the indicators are pointing to a dump way before then right we were far overstretched now what we can do here is if we confirm above this we could really enter a really amazing bull market again but if we reject here then it's trouble it really is trouble so we need to really keep an eye on what's going on here. And if you look at the daily, and I said this before, can you see what's happening? This looks like there's a death cross approaching. Because it looks like the 100 MA wants to come below the 200 MA. And one of the reasons why I said this could be lagging is because we've already had this massive dump. Right? We've already had this massive dump. And usually when the death cross approaches after such a massive dump, it kind of reverses. But that doesn't mean that it will happen. So there's a good chance that we do get the depth cross and then we head down lower into the depths and we get really destroyed and we can go into, you know, uh, another uh, uh, bear market. But it's really, really hard to I'm say. Just trying to get back into the room. Um, oh, sorry, who, who's mate? Sorry. Someone's trying to get back into the room. Okay. Cool. Um, does anyone have any questions with the NASDAQ? So the NASDAQ's actually really, really followed technicals really, really closely. So if you look at the weekly, uh, for instance, if you look at the we weekly MACD, look what happened here. It crossed. And we mentioned this in the group. The weekly MACD has crossed. And look what happened when the weekly MACD crossed. And no one takes it seriously. What happened? We went and that's, that was the beginning of the dump. See, if you just took all your stocks out here, you saved yourself some stock, 75%, 70% drops. Right? And if you buy in now, and look, we might cross here. And if you buy in now, again, you've missed this here, but you're, at least you're waiting for confirmation, right? You're missing potential gain, 
But at least you're waiting for confirmation on the indicators here. Does that make sense? So trend lines like this are really, really important. And trend lines really, really are... Um, if you can draw trends line, trend lines really, really well, that's the key to trading. Forget about moving averages, um, trend lines and RSI. You could probably just use those two to do trading. Again, I don't advocate trading, but uh, it, it works really well. For instance, like Rune here. Again, it's been... It breaks out, retest this, and it's all connected to the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ falls here, Bitcoin falls, alts fall. Right, it's all connected. But if... if if the Nasdaq doesn't fail here and it goes up, then then investing in the riskiest stuff is important because everything's going to go up. So if you know you're on a bullish market cycle, you shouldn't just invest in all the safe stuff because what's the point? The safe stuff's going to go up, but the riskiest stuff's going to go up a lot as long as you understand the good risky stuff. And that's what they got the group for, right? To identify the good risky stuff that hasn't quite gone up yet. Yeah, so that's why, like, you know, you can do it in stocks, but me personally, I obviously I've got stocks, but crypto is where the real gains are made, the life changing gains are made. Um, cool. So I, I, I think that's enough of the technicals. Does anyone have any more questions around technicals? So Trading View, RSI, Trend Lines, MACD. Right. So I would just start practicing. Take your favorite stock or your favorite crypto, start practicing technicals. Um, and uh, uh, a suggestion we can talk about Fibonacci, but that's just how to take profits and stuff. So the, the fundamental thing really, really, really is um, um, uh, the, the, those three indicators there. Any more questions? Any more, any more coins or tokens or stocks you want me to do some TA on so you get some context? of something fresh no here's one for you hit me uh, by the way i don't want to be the only person talking so if anybody else want to jump in please do um let's say you're very uh, you just want to fire and forget and you want to buy something on a monthly basis yeah well 500 uh, sorry 250 bucks, 250 pounds, whatever, and you want to put it into something on yep. a regular basis. You can do it, say, on the 10th of the month, or is there any benefit of doing it at certain points where the indicators line up? Mate, his, uh, statistically, there's no, uh, there's uh, just do it whenever you can. It doesn't make a difference. So I've, I have looked into this. Apparently, if you just put in 500 pounds, 200 pounds, or whatever, into something good, Obviously, don't put it into something risky, into something good, then uh, that's probably one of the best strategies that you can if you want to be a passive investor. So that just works. There is no best time for it. There's a difference between time in the market and time in the market. And time in the market is just best. If you just bought Ethereum, right, and just put in $80, $80 every single month for the last four years, you'd be a rich man, you know? Just eighty dollars every single month. It doesn't matter if it's at four k. It doesn't matter if it's at eighty eighty dollars. You know, it doesn't matter. Just put in, but it has to be something good, and that does that does have an upward trajectory. There's no point in putting eighty dollars into something that's going to keep going down. Um, yeah, sorry, yeah, I I got one. Go on, mate. <clears throat> so, um, was that Jatin speaking? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So I I done that. I I had a stock which I quite a lot of. It aimed to just leave it and then it went up took my profit out well i took my original investment out and left the profits in and then it just dived because i left it for about a year without even checking not even the news around this one subject area but um it was canopy growth oh yeah yeah and it's gone down to like eight dollars a share now which is great because it means you know people can buy it cheap but it completely tanked so you're looking you where was your question what other shares should we look at to be honest, for me, one thing I have considered that I looked at that, I just, you know, 2022 for me is kind of panned out as I expected it to, with the exception of work. I expected things to be choppy because people have been talking about it ever since I've started doing this stuff. So it was more of a case of like, say I want to buy 
into NVIDIA and AMD on a regular basis. I, I don't have a lot to start off with. Yes, I've bought a little bit off the dip, but it's a case of actually, I don't have lump sums to throw away. So to put in one go, I'm better off like, okay, I can afford to buy two, in, let's say, $250 worth of AMD and maybe $300 worth of NVIDIA per month. Is there any point in sort of like allocating that at specific points? But that's that. I wouldn't do it to something like that about Peloton. Um, so your examples would be Peloton for me because I'm a Peloton yeah. consumer. I, I would have like but, two years ago, I would have stupidly just bought shares on it and um, and lost a hell of a lot of money. Peloton, however, is good and lemonade are really good swing stocks if you get them low enough. Um, they just every now and again they'll just bump up six percent, seven percent for no reason. But they're probably better trading opportunities. But 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 Jatin, like I and I mean I was speaking against Peloton for a while, right? It's like Peloton, if you use just the fundamental approach, you could see that Peloton was ridiculous. Right? I mean no. it was so overvalued. Like its market cap is eight billion now, right? What was its market cap at its high? So it's at twenty four dollars now. Fifty dollars, wasn't it? Yeah. It was really crazy. So like, I, I just, this is there's a reason. Like, I just think like people just can't understand how market caps work. They just don't un like. You need to understand how market cap works. Like, if if you have a company that has an earning, so let's go down here. What was the earnings? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Here, here, here was. Sorry. Um, both of those hit their peak in 2000 and have never, ever, ever hit their share price peak since. Yeah, so 1.83 billion uh, uh, revenue and minus uh, 70, 70, so it's lost 71 million. That's fine. Like losing money is, is fine. And revenues, you know, but revenue was 1.83 billion, right? And its market cap uh, was at what? 100 billion, 120 billion? I mean, I mean that was like four times the size of Twitter at that point, or five times the size of Twitter. So it was to me, it was just like, guys, you you need to be looking at this. This is just absolutely crazy. I get sometimes things are overvalued at Tesla to a massive extent, right? They can, but that's Tesla, you know. Like they have a lot, but yeah, I I, I just think that um, yeah, yeah it, Peloton doesn't have the fanboy base. Yeah, uh, exactly. Tesla. But like like PLTR, mate, PLTR is still overvalued in my opinion, right? But but it's got like you said, it's got that fanboy thing going on for it, right? A lot of developers love it. It's I mean, and also right now, which you know, I bought at, you know when I first bought it at ten dollars, I didn't do anything, and now I've got to buy it at ten dollars again. So you know, and I've got a massive stack of this now, so I'm really happy with it. So I'm happy to. If this goes to five dollars, happy. If this goes to one dollar, happy. I'm just happy to buy, 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 buy. Like you said, put a little bit in every single month to keep buying. If I can buy a yes, massive position, it's great. Something that would DCA it because uh, it's um, actually a little bit uh, a bit too high now, now pretty down. But I didn't buy the dips in my ISA deliberately because I didn't want my ISA just to be palantir. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, so I stopped. And I went and I started buying Palantir on, on Interactive Brokers. So I picked up another 100 at about uh, $10.90. Yeah. And, and another thing, like, I think Canopy Growth was mentioned, but it's like ACB, right? I used to be an ACB. Again, like, you have to understand with uh, uh, stocks, they hide also the information around um, how many stocks are out there isn't as easy, easy to get as crypto. It's very easy to, to understand how, ma how many the max supply is, what the inflation rate is. So it's really easy to understand value. But with with companies, they can do a placement and increase and inflate the shares as much as they want. So it you, it's this is why I don't invest in shares as much. That is now dimension NMDM. So in 2021, I think they did something like six share uh, liquidations. Right dilutions or five dilutions and what would happen it had such a fan base following yeah uh, i mean I, this is one of the ones i picked up at about two dollars and because i only started with small amounts of money i stayed in um, and i ended up taking a loss on some of the, some of the things so i got kind of part profit and part loss but it it was it's ridiculous now the company doesn't actually make any money but it's sitting on something like one billion cash 
So it's actually worth four dollars fifty or five dollars. Yeah. But if you look at the chart, the chart is ridiculous. Every every time you see a downturn, it's it's when they dilute. Yeah, yeah. So, but but if yeah. but just going back to crypto, and if you look at something like Ethereum, right? So if you if you if you imagine holding Microsoft shares, the only way to use Azure is to hold Microsoft shares, and every time you use Azure, it actually burned a Microsoft share. So also. Uh, deflating the supply and if you look at ethereum which is the second biggest protocol in the world next to bitcoin right it's it's going to become deflationary and in a few months it's going to um become it's, go, it's going to become really deflationary because the halving if you if you understand in bitcoin where the supply goes down well how much mine goes down by half like every every four four years or whatever we're going to have like a triple halving in ethereum in a few months and that could really lead to a massive bull market Right, and Ethereum could really go to about twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Who knows? Depending on how much it's used. But imagine what would happen to Microsoft stock if they said, like, to use our services, you have to have our share, and the share gets burned. So that's what crypto does. So to understand all this stuff is really, really important because they have utility. You know, NFTs are a completely different thing, and they're important, important as well. So we're not going to talk about it today, but they also have the same kind of issue that's coming out. So it's really good to get ahead of that curve because we're still early. I don't think we're that that early in crypto, but we're definitely early in NFTs. So it's really good to understand things before they they get to the mainstream. Because when Michael, my, uh, you know, Michael Saylor was buying Bitcoin at forty k, we already bought at four k. But well done, billionaire. We're already here, mate. We've been here for years. You know, Ethereum, we've been buying Ethereum and Matic and whatever, Phantom. So it's good to be ahead of the curve. And we're going to be ahead of the curve on NFTs as well because they're not they're not all buying yet. They will do at some point. But if we understand it now and we start buying the good stuff now, then, you know, it's a limited supply. It's not like stocks and fiat and whatever. You just can't keep inflating it and inflating it and inflating it. Guys, I've got a bit of a hard stop, so I've got like maybe five more minutes to talk about any more technicals that you guys want me to go through. Is there any stocks you want me to look at? Uh, do some TAs or any, on anything together? Just call out in the chat if you don't want to speak. Okay, cool. Um, so why don't we why don't we um, call it a day there? If you feel that was useful and if you let me know what you'd like to... Oh, the Paul wants to come in now. <laughs> Hi, mate. We're, we're, up, we're just about to log off. Do you have any stocks or tokens you want me to do TA on? If you do, shout it out and be the last one we do and then we'll call it a day. I'm talking to Paul there. No? Okay, cool. So if you put in the group uh, for the next session uh, what we want to look at, and Jatin, maybe you want to talk about some stocks or whatever. Maybe we can talk about stocks next time. Maybe we can talk about property next time. It doesn't just have to be about crypto. So maybe we can mix it up. So maybe next time we talk about stocks and the time after that we talk about property and time after that we talk about hard assets because I deal in hard assets as well and they make a lot of money. And I know some of you guys deal in um, watches and stuff like that as well. So it's good to get like maybe five or six different revenue streams going. Cool. Okay, cool. Let, we, can, we can talk about hard assets. All right, guys. Thank you for attending. And uh, if it's recorded, I'll put this on uh, YouTube order. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Bye. Bye.